Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an absolutely massive video in the chess world. Today, Ali Reza Firuja, the teenager originally from Iran, now living in France, just broke the record for 2,800 ELO, the youngest ever to do it. In this video, I'm going to take you through five of his games that he just played at the European Team Championships, obviously representing Board 1 of France. Nothing else to say. I really don't want to... I don't want to sit here and give you any massive intro, but he broke the record by about six months. Magnus Carlsen held it at 18 years and 11 months, getting it in late 2009. Well, here we go. Let's just look at all these, these absolutely incredible games. Uh, we're going to follow Ali Reza's perspective. The first game, we are uh, following Victor Erdos with the white pieces and Firuja with the black pieces. Uh, every one of the grandmasters that you see in this video is about 26, 2700. Uh, I will let you know if um, if anything changes. So, Ali Reza plays c6. Now, what makes this game really interesting is the fact that around prior, Ali Reza played black in Akaro Khan, and his opponent played the exact same opening. So Ali Reza knows, what, knows the guy knows what he's going to do, and he does it anyway. Plays bishop g4. Uh, this 2 knights Karo Khan system is designed uh, for black to trade this bishop immediately and restructure on the light squares. Just get rid of a piece that might be a potential liability uh, and, uh, and restructure everything like this. d4 is a gambit intended to make black take on e4 and then potentially take this pawn as well. Ali Reza chooses not to indulge and plays the move knight to f6 instead. Now here, Erdos plays... I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, by the way. E takes d5. Now that is a weird move. Admittedly, that is a very strange move. I feel like bishop d3, just kind of keeping that tension in the center of the board, is a little bit more common. The reason why this is strange is because now you have an exchange Karo Khan, where the knight is in front of the c-pawn. The knight in front of the c-pawn exerts no pressure on the center, which is why Erdos does this. He moves the knight back to e2 and structures with d4 and c3, and he has a very pleasant position. Bishop d6, bishop c2, and now any normal person just castles. Um, but okay, Ali Reza plays rook c8. g4. Wow, okay. Um, well, you've shown me that if I castle, you're probably going to blow my head off, right? g5, h4. So in this position, Ali Reza Feruja shows you just why I have to make a video about this man. By the way, I'm wearing blue uh, to represent like the like, uh, like fr French flag. Just in I, don't, I don't know why I have to point that out now. I also had a red hoodie, but I decided to wear blue. Anyway... Uh, I'll give you like five guesses. Try to guess what Ali Reza played here. I'll take a sip of this bottle of this water. Couldn't even say that word correctly. Ali Reza played King D7. That looks like an IRL glitch. Like, oh my god. <laughs> that must be a relay error. I mean, obviously he didn't play King D7. What a stupid move. Nope, King D7 is actually completely reasonable. And you know what else he played after that? Well, obviously he had to take on G5. Plays King C7 with a straight face. And King B8. My dude, just in the middle of the game, was like, actually, white can't do anything to me. I can make three king moves. Ha 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 ha. And, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's completely fine. This is completely incredible. And then, okay. So, now Ali Reza uh, obviously walked his king. All right, let's figure out the next phase of the game. My dude played b5. My dude walked his king through a war zone into a hut and proceeded to shoot the bazooka out of the ceiling and blow up the roof. I mean, it, it, what? When I play like this, I lose immediately. When he plays like this, well, I can't spoil the result, although you probably know the result. A5, my dude is playing with the weakest part of his position on the enemy king. Now, admittedly, he does have a rook on the same line of attack as the enemy king. Also, admittedly, something like king b1, and now both kings are on the b file, right? Um, Erdos here uh, plays queen d3, rotates the queen over to attack b5. Ali Reza brings out the queen. And this is a pretty scary position because white is still very, very much infiltrating over on g7. I mean, that is no joke. But queen b7 not only defends the only weakness you have, it also continues to be flexible on the attack. I mean, this queen gives the king a kiss and then proceeds to watch the f-pawn over here while also escorting the pawn to b4. Ali Reza is about to activate four pieces on the enemy king here with his b5, a5 advance. And Ali Reza's play style, he's kind of evolved to a point where he convinces the computer that his play is good. At first, his, the computer's like, oh my god, walking the king over, b5a5, what a moron. And then the computer's like, actually? Oh, I, he has a point. So that's how you know you've transcended chess. Um, and now Ali Reza plays b4. The attack is ready. a4. And now bishop back to f8. This is a fascinating move. He's like, what are you going to do with this rook? Rook h7, he wants to trade, keep the queen in there, check. King d1, 
f5. And you might say, why didn't you go king b1? He didn't go king b1 because I guess he didn't like this. He didn't like stuff opening up over here. So you play king d1. And now f5. And Alirazi just comes right back. <laughs> He's like, where did we uh, leave things? Oh yeah, uh, I'm going to rotate my rook back over. We're going to take knight e7. Now this game still takes a very long time, actually. Uh, even though he has infiltrated on the queen side, the position is anything but over. And a really... Uh, kind of sure sign of a very strong player is when to transform the structure. And so he transforms via queen trade. He thinks that practically speaking here, because of the massive liability of the queen side pawns, which the attack created, he doesn't have to deliver mate, he can just scoop up the goodies as the game goes on. And even though black, uh, sorry, even though white does have a nice strong outpost over on b5, look at this reroute. I mean, the dude just like took some moves, put his knight strongly into the center of the board. None of these pawns can go anywhere. And uh, knight c3. And you say, why did he do, why did Erdo just give him the pawn? What did he, you know, paid actor? No. I mean, what, what was, you're going to go bishop d2 next. I mean, you're going to win all his pawns anyway. So he tries to get some sort of opposite colored bishop position, dark square versus light squared bishop, which would be a draw. It would be. It would be a draw if there were also not rooks on the board. And if, look at, are you seeing what's happening here? You, you want an instant replay of that? My dude walked the king to the queen side just to walk it all the way to the other side and win the h5 pawn. What a savage. And he now walks the king all the way down to f3. He doesn't trade rooks. Opposite colored bishop endgame. Doesn't trade rooks just yet. Doesn't trade rooks just yet. Reroutes the bishop. Oh. <laughs> uh, he wins a4. Rook a3 check. And Erdos resigned. Rook d5 is designed with this in mind, which would be a draw. But we have an in-between move. Rook a3 check, and now pawn takes d5. And he played that game on all three sides of the board. He probably made about 20 king moves, and that's just the first game of this video. You know you are in for some good stuff. A huge win with the black pieces and a Karo Khan defense. Fascinating game where he walked his king, started an attack, traded the queens into an endgame, picked up a pawn, walked the king. I mean, you saw it. I don't have to summarize it. All right. This is the next game. This is round five, uh, four of the European Team Championship. He's playing Mustafa Yilmaz, who's the strongest player in Turkey. Not actually, but the strongest player on their team. I think Ipatov might be the highest rated player there, but Yilmaz, very strong player. Um, and we have uh, Open Sicilian, a Nightorf. Okay, so what is Ali Reza gonna show you that there's levels to this game, right? Because Yilmaz is a very strong gem, but he's, he's not 27, 80, 90, he's 26, 30. Okay, Bishop E3, Black plays E5, Knight rotates back, and now Bishop E6. At this point, White has a couple of ways forward. Ali Reza chooses a more trendy and modern way, which is just queen d2 and long castle. So normally, queen d2 and f3 come together, so knight g4 is not a thing, but he just castles. Bishop b7. And in this position, White has a lot of moves. Um, generally, f3 is played, uh, but Ali Reza plays a move that's almost never been played. But it has been played. It's almost never been played, but it has been played by Anand. Or Anand is the right way to say it. H3, what is the point? Well, you let black go b5, g4. Now, white has already castled, right? So black is going to try to do stuff over here. White is going to try to co take complete dominant control of that d5 square. It's a, it's a juicy square in the Nidorf. Survive the, the queen side attack. And depending on where black goes with the king, create an attack of their own. So either you're going to attack over here, or you'll try to open up the center, bust open the center. Bust open the center with f4. Um, we have rook c8. And at this point, we have the first new move. Yilmaz can go knight d7 back or knight to h5. Knight, uh, knight to h5. Knight d7 has been played in a few games. This is the first new move. And it shows us that Ali Reza has now created this wedge against these two pieces. This knight is kind of stranded, right? And so black is going to try to try to do some stuff on this side of the board. So now, kind of, ball is in Yilmaz's court. He's got he's to make the first jump forward. He jumps in with the knight, and Ali Reza kills the knight. Nope, that knight cannot survive. Now black has to decide what to do. If black plays bc4, that is an extremely counterintuitive move because you close off both your, your bishop and your rook. How the hell can that possibly be correct? And yet, at first, the engine actually likes it. It thinks that rook c4, which looks far more flexible, is not the right way to go. But the problem is, bc4 attacked a piece and made white react, whereas rook c4 now gives the move back to white. And Ali Reza does not hesitate. That juicy square on d5 is up for grabs. And the thing about this for black is that if you do not create a winning attack on that side of the board, 
your pawns will be destroyed. The queen side is where white will then create a counterattack and win the game. Because you're overextended. All your pieces are kind of bunched together over here. Nobody's, nobody's on the queen side. So queen d5, queen c7. Black now is going to castle. Right? Maybe bring a third rook. All right. So Ali Reza plays knight back to see. That's a very tricky move. To, uh, because if, if this, it's bait. Whoop. How often do you see a rook trade counter thrust attack? Look at that. Queen d7. Queen a8 is coming. Knight f3 is coming. Knight e5. Right? There's all these tactics now if the king gets out of the way. So we have rook back to c6. And right here after c3, Ali Reza just... Uh, th this, is, this is stunning. Um... I said black wants to attack white on the queen side, right? Right? Well, what if white attacks black on the queen side? What? I told you. If black's attack is unsuccessful, a4 and Ali Reza again pushes all the pawns in front of his king. Now, he could have played queen b5 here. But we're not, I'm not here to correct any of his play because I don't, I don't care what Stockfish says. Ali Reza convinces Stockfish that he's correct. Yilmaz here has to play BA4, allowing this pawn through and sacrificing the rook. That's very hard to do. Instead, he plays AB4 and a temporary queen sacrifice in the form of KABAM! Oh my goodness. And now, BAM! And the rook's laser beam. Now, you either lose the queen or you have to sack it. Uh, if you do something like queen d7 and takes, you might think that you're surviving. You're not surviving. Um, Yilmaz sacrifices the queen back and tries to move the rook out of the way. But now, here comes the a-pawn. And a few moves later, Ali Reza infiltrated with his rook, pushed the a-pawn to the depths of the position, took on d6, and black simply has no more moves. Black simply has no more moves, and so for that reason, he resigned because all the pieces are on the a-file, and none of them can do a thing. Takes is coming, rook b7, this knight will join the attack and get rid, of, get rid of that rook. And Ali Reza just two games in a row has made it look absolutely just, I mean, simply, simply, like, simply simple. I don't, I don't know what to say. He played h3, which I don't know if it was his own inspiration over the border or what. I mean, I'm assuming it wasn't. But uh, he played something that wasn't the main line. And he made his opponent make a couple of difficult decisions where to put that knight, right? Maybe you don't want to bunch up near your king. Ilmas thought it was more important to stop f4. That knight got stranded. And that knight was stranded for a while. That knight really got stranded. In fact, these pieces didn't move, like, until the game was over. Literally until it was over. Then the pieces got back. And, I mean, it's like Ali Reza just froze them, like deer in headlights. Next game. Uh, this game, Ali Reza's got the black pieces. This is maybe from the fifth round. His opponent is Gabriel Sargisyan. Um, and... Uh, he's... Uh, it's, it's France versus um, Armenia. So, this game was one of the most unbelievable pieces of opening preparation I've ever seen in my life. Like, ever. Ever. Okay? So, d4, d5. Um, and uh, as I'm corresponding with my thumbnail designer on this video, c4, c6. So, nothing crazy. We have a Slav defense. Uh, the Slav defense at the highest level is usually the semi-Slav defense or the open Slav. They don't really play the Schlechter with g6. They don't really play a6, which is called... Uh, Chelyabinsk or Chess.com calls this the chameleon variation. What the... what? Anyway, they usually do one or the other dc4. Now dc4, uh, black wants to play b5 and support this pawn. There is a4 preventing b5 and there is e4, known as the Geller Gambit. The modern treatment here after b5 is to play bishop e2. Uh, it's a very topical variation. There was an amazing report Adiban game, I believe, from uh, Reykjavik Open. Uh, but a4 was played in this game, bishop f5, and now white has two choices. White can play the central variation, trying to come in with this knight, or e6, e3, and like this. Okay, mainline position. Bishop b4, castles, castles, queen e2, all mainline stuff. Now, historically, black has played knight d7, bishop g6, bishop g4, because white is trying to play e4. White is trying to win the battle for the e4 square, right? So Ali Reza goes back to g6. White, uh, Black has started doing this preemptively because now e4 does not come with a tempo. So the difference being that if knight d7 e4 is played, you, you I mean, you, you see, what I'm, see what I'm saying? You can't take because then this. So uh, bishop g6 e4 you would take and then you would take. So you prevent e4. However, it comes with a drawback. Your bishop can just get attacked. And then white can just get the bishop pair and play rook d1. 
So now white has the two bishops, a slightly better pawn structure, but black is very solid. That's the thing about the Slav defense. You're very solid. Very solid defense. So all he has to play is queen c7. We have e4 and now e5. So all he has to meet him in the center. It's generally a good rule of thumb. If they play e4, you can't let them play e5. If you, if you let them play this, now you are really going to suffer. They're going to put their knight here. They're going to go mate you on the h file. I mean, it's going to get very ugly. So e4, e5. D5. And here is where the preparation really starts to begin. Because here, Ali Reza plays a move and a series of moves that have only ever been played once in any game ever, which means that he researched this and created his own thing. Bishop takes c3. This is not considered a good, like a good move on a low depth by an engine. Because here there is this Zwischenzug d6. Right? There is d6. And d6 forces the queen to move, and now bc3, right? So now this pawn is just a passer, and it's, it looks really strong. But here comes dynamite, b5. So b5 attacks the bishop, makes it move, because if a, b, just this, right? So now the bishop has to go somewhere. Sargisyan spent some time playing bishop a2. Wow. I guess he didn't like blocking his own rook. He didn't like here because he can get hit with tempo. So he says, okay, bishop a2. You can't do this because check, check, oops, and you lose the queen. So Alirez is like, I know, this is in my notes. Now I'm up a pawn. My pawns are doubled, but I'm up a pawn. And this is still hanging. Sargisyan sacks the second pawn. He sacrifices the second pawn. And in this position, the game begins for black. So Ali Reza now has to play on his own. 21 moves of prep, it seemed like. 21 moves. I don't know if it was 21 or 18 or 19, but this is the position that he got. He, he, he was up like 45 minutes on the clock and two pawns. He's up two pawns. The engine still evaluates this as equal. Okay? It still evaluates this as a completely equal position. Um, but it's very difficult to play. You have to play rook d1, which is what he played. But then after queen c3, you have to play bishop c4, only move. Why bishop c4? Well, let's say black plays, I don't know, something like knight b6 attacking the bishop. Now rook c1, and if queen a5, which is what you wanted, bishop takes f7 check, rook f7, and the queen is trapped. The queen is trapped, trapped, right here. White had to find this kind of geometric idea. Rook c1 played, queen a5. See, now, the, now that, that's the difference. Now the queen gets out. Now Ali Reza is going for a queen trade. He, res he completely escapes with the queen. Queen c3, queen a5, queen b5, queen c6. Rook c1, rook b6. Now he's got to consolidate. Okay? So now we get a little queen dance. And now that d6 pawn is about to fall. He's going to win the d6 pawn. That pawn that he allowed to invade... And now is repelling the enemy forces with this knight. It's a fascinating bit of coordination here in the black position. Now d6 falls. And queen takes g6 is a fascinating bit of counterplay here from Sargisyan. Like you can't take the queen. But now there's takes, takes, queen comes back. Best move. Why? Hi! We're headed over to e2. We can just let this queen hang out. It can't do anything to us. All right, it's like a crazy person trying to bang on the window of your car. No, queen, queen e2. And now Sargisyan has nothing better. He has to trade queens. And Ali Reza is two pawns up in an endgame. So what does he do? Push his pawns, protect them, reroute his knight to c5, knight jumps into d3. This, pos this position is over. I mean, Ali Reza is just going to slowly but surely continuously improve his position. He's now trying to get into b2 and trade rooks. So we have bishop c1. Look at that. That is a flare for the, for the... Look at that. There's no rook c8. You can't take this. Oh my gosh. The pawn's just too strong. Rook c4... And Ali Rezek outcalculates Sargisyan, sacrificing this, but getting this with a2 coming. So we have this, and the bishop is kicked out, and uh, knight c1. And now we have this, and this, and this. And in this position, Sargisyan resigned, and Ali Reza Feruja won yet another game. Makes it look easy. 20 something moves of prep in a slob defense with black. To win this consistently at this level with the black pieces is unreal. You either have to do it through amazing preparation, amazing calculation. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's really something. Dealing with all your opponent's tricks and counterplay, we go to the next game. Here, Ali Reza is playing a very underrated, a criminally underrated Badur Jobava. Jobava 
is what is Jobaba's rating right now? I'm gonna go Jobaba Fide. Jobaba has been 2700 in the past. His rating is 2582. Jobaba's a 2700 chess mind. Easy. I mean, 2650, easy. 2680, easy. So this is a tough matchup, and Jobaba plays the Karo Khan, which is kind of interesting because Ali Reza plays the Karo Khan with black as well. So we have this, we have a short variation, knight f3 and bishop 2e2, uh, not going for any of the h4 stuff, and we get a maneuvering short variation, so we have h6, knight d7, uh, very topical mainline position, a5 is a bit of, a, a6 is a bit of a weird move, um, I mean I've seen a5, um, so a6 is a little cagey, you know, like, like this, like come and get me, and um, this game takes a very long time to open up, so Ali Reza Baits b6, which is very interesting. Comes back, wants to get in here. a5. So he's, he's baiting pawn moves. See what he's doing. Queen b7. Someone's got to do something with a pawn sometime soon. Okay, we have our first trade. It took 16 moves. But what's happening with the pawns? So Alireza reroutes the knight to f4. Look how stupid knights are. They need three moves to go a square up. But like, that's just how knights work. All right. Someone's going to have to do something. I mean, it, th this pawn play is taking forever. But if you play c5, I get bishop b5. You play f6, I take here. So rook c7. And here, Ali Reza says, okay, I have completely shut down Badur's pawn play. He cannot play c5 or b5. He can't play f6. If black has no pawn breaks, it's time for me to do something. Queen b8. Queen e3. Slow improvement. Queen d8. h3. Now, finally, Badur plays c5. All right? He finally gets his pawn break. Ali Reza <coughs> can play bishop to b5 here, and as promised, plays bishop to b5. And now you have to live with the fact that you cannot move a pawn backwards. You have allowed my bishop to camp that b5 outpost for the remainder of this game. Okay? But this bishop also has been camping over... What was that? Camping over here. And it, it doesn't look fantastic. I mean, it, it, it has no targets. All of white's pieces are on dark squares. Literally. You ever seen something like this? Look at this. Every single important piece is on a dark square. Um, so, knight c6, king h2, takes, takes. The center has been clarified, and Jobaba is a move or two away from actually winning the battle for the c-file, which does look like something important, but Ali Reza is at the level where he anticipates this already, and so he goes for a queen trade. He's very good at finding the right moment to offer the exchange. Now, queen c3 looks possible, but then two knights are hanging, so then you have to wander in here and just hope to God this knight is not trapped for the remainder of the game. So rook c8 is played. And then Badur plays this fascinating move to disconnect the queen from the rook. And Ali Reza says, you don't want a queen trade? Okay. Queen g3. Do you know what's going to happen after queen g3 is played, folks? What do you think Ali Reza is going to do in a couple moves? If you said play, play g5, you're paying attention. If you didn't say anything because you're watching me in another tab, that's fine. Now, here's a very nice move. Remember that really strong bishop on b5? Ali Reza says, I don't need it. Here's why. That knight was the closest defender to the dark squares on the king side that was available. By trading it off and making this queen leave that diagonal, I can now play g5. He knows when to improve his position. He knows when to give away the potential things that look good in his position. Okay? Um... Three pieces are stranded over here, so he plays g5. Now it's going to get very difficult for black. Takes, takes, queen d8, check. King g8, still safe. Now, if you play rook g1 here, looking to get over here, black plays bishop f5. Bishop f5, I was supposed to go one more square. Black comes back to f5. So what does Ali Reza play? Plays this first. Why? What is the difference between these two moves? Knight g5. The knight needs to go create the threats first while this rook is hanging. Yes, that rook is completely hanging. It cannot be taken because there is check, king h8, and now this. That is what the grades do. They, they out-calculate everybody. Why does this work? Not because I take this. Check, here, check, here, check. Boom, boom. I lure you into the fork. So Ali Reza plays knight f3 and Badur plays g6, but that is the last mistake that he could make in this game because now his bishop cannot ever come back and fight for those squares. Knight c6, and Ali Reza ends this game in a bit of a style. Knight jumps out to h5. Looks like black is defending. King f8. But over here, black is slowly running out of moves. 
And so we have this. Knight g5. I mean, every piece is involved. Remember bishop c2 a long time ago? Right? He closed, he made black close his own gates on the bishop, leaving the bishop just out to die here. And the game ends very nicely. A temporary queen sacrifice, number two of this video. And Jobaba resigned because there is this, 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 take, take, knight f7. And the rook is lost. And, you know, Badur's a strong player, but I don't think anybody would play against Ali Reza Ferruja down a full piece in an endgame. And that is a fourth win. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the final game of the, of, of the entire event. It's ninth round. Ali Reza is playing on the first board of the entire ballroom versus Shakri Armamidyarov of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is as powerful of a team as the French team. They both have two over 2770 rated players, 2750 rated players. Rajabov is the second board for Azerbaijan. It's a top tier matchup. And the storyline of Ali Reza's ascend, like uh, the ascending, was the fact that um, he only beats 2600s. His record against 2700s isn't as dazzling. This 2800 stuff, it's, it's a bit of fluff. Blah, 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 blah. Well, here he is. He gets to play Mamid Yarov, who's 2760. Let's see. By the way, that's also a stupid thing to say because Ali Reza's had a great record against 2700s in 2021 and 2020. The only player he loses to consistently in classical chess is Magnus Carlsen, which is another story. E4. And we have an Italian. Now, you know that against these guys, they're going to go E4, E5. Notice that Ali Reza hasn't faced an E4, E5 just yet. There's Sicilians and things like that. But the top tier guys, they know everything about E4, E5, right? So they're going to equalize against you. Ali Reza plays Gioco Pianissimo with D D3, C3. Uh, we have D6, H6, very fighting style. A5, you're going to see later, preventing white expanding on the queen side with B4. There's a lot of like these different maneuvering Italians. So Knight D2 and... What you're going to get with Mamid Yarov is you're not always going to get a maneuvering game. You're going to get imbalance. So he, he, he does this. First things first, he doubles his own e-pawns. But it's fine because the open F file, right? Um, but a couple moves later when I was watching this, and by the way, Ali Reza does the same trade, but he takes with the rook instead because maybe you will support your center or maybe you will attack. He doesn't want to compromise his structure. Now, A4 and D5. What you're going to see in this game is one of the strangest transformations of structure ever. So you see, I mean, Mami Diarov just A4, B5, like, this is his style. He, he likes to play like this. And then he takes with the knight. This is crazy. This is the ugliest structure ever. And yet, the position is actually, like, it's, it's a draw. It's actually a draw. If you, let the if you let Stockfish sit, it literally wants you to just repeat moves. It, it, it just wants you to like just go back and forth like something something like this like rook e3 because knight takes d3 there is all sorts of you know because black weak in this position but Ali Reza plays a3 now a3 might be a draw offer it actually might be a draw offer because what if black plays knight f4 and then something like this just I mean Mamidjarov has a draw in hand if he needs but my Majarov says no. Let's play on. Queen e8. He thinks for a little bit, plays no. My knight on f4 is good. He convinces himself that he has a very strong position. Ali Reza now plays g3. What? He hangs a pawn with check? What is he, nuts? Well, here's the thing. It's actually better to go back. Why? Because look at, look at what my Majarov has done. Yes, I understand he has seven to six pawns. But you need to be 100% certain that doubled E and double G pawns with B and A pawns overextended to their maximum capacity. Like, this is not the death of you. You almost have no pawn moves left, right? So Ali Reza sets the bait for Mamid Yarov. He's like, yo, Shaq, you want to do this? And Shaq's like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to go for this position. Queen G4, Rook F5, and now Knight F3. Queen F7, Queen E4. You could have taken on g5, but then rook takes f2. Looks a little bit scary. So queen e4, rook h1, queen c7, g4. Whoa, what's going on here? So he gave him a full knight, but if you move the knight, there is rook takes f2, and it's mate. It's actually just mate. Boom, boom. It's mate. So what is going on? Alireza has to play the cool, calm, and collected king g1. Making sure that the knight must be taken now. Rook takes f3. 
Rook takes f3, queen f3. Now, he has a choice. He can literally take three pawns. Only one of them is any good, though. It's check. You see, because that's mate. <laughs> so, yeah. Queen f7, takes, takes. And now we have a six on six endgame. However, white is still better. Why is white better? Because white is Ali Reza. No, double g pawns. Bad structure for black. Rook h4. Rook d7. We're starting to trade some pawns, but Ali Reza emerges a pawn up. Now, this is a defendable endgame if and only if black keeps the pieces active. Rook d2. Very nice. c4. Ali Reza trying to break out. Rook takes b2 as possible, but then check here. And rook c6. King f5 and takes. Now, objectively speaking, this is probably still a draw. You put Magnus on the white side, he's going to torture you. You put Magnus on the black side, he's going to make a draw effortlessly. Magnus is a really tough barometer when it comes to draws, because he's like the goat of endgames. Uh, not of draws, of, of endgames. Um, so b6. So how do you create winning chances here? If this pawn was here, there would be basically none. But because there is a little imbalance of structure... You can somehow push this king away from this pawn and surround it in a way it cannot be defended. But it's still an equal position. So Ali Reza plays b7. We swap pawns. e4. Now, I'm not sure that move is 100% necessary, but he wanted to play it because in a worst-case scenario, you know, you kind of get blocked. Something like this. But, you know, then there's still e4. So it, 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 he decides to play e4 right away. Check. King f6. King f1. Uh-huh. King e2. All right, Ali Reza is trying to, trying to figure something out here. King f1. He's like, all right, I'm not going to be able to go that way, right? So king d4. Where's king d4 going? Apparently, there is only one way to draw this game now. And that way is the absolutely ludicrous rook f3. Rook f3 is an absurd move. Rook takes f3, pawn takes f3. You would think two pawns versus one. It's just easy win. How? King e1. King e4. Let's say the king tries to come out. Nope. Now you say, oh, king c2, I'm so clever. Nope. g4? No, I stop you. I stop you, I get back in time. And then, if you think you're really clever, I sneak in here. And uh, g4, king e2, g5, king f2, g6. And um, this is a draw. This is, th th this is simply a draw because we're both making queens. So, he plays king d4, but here's the problem. Now the king is getting out. King e5, he tries to come back, g4. Ali Reza got to the perfect setup. And Shock resigned. Right here. He just resigned. Why did he resign? Um, because king g3 is coming, and then you're going to find a way to get this king away. So for example, let's just say uh, rook, rook e7, okay? First of all, you can just push. You just push too. Uh, so let's say rook g7 to prevent that. So let's say like king h4, check here, or I even suppose king g5, but let's say something, something like this. Um, you can check and get to f4. And once you get to f4 or play g5, the two of these things combined is just game over for black. Because now this king is completely shielded off. And if this rook tries to come around and take anything, I'm going to push my pawn. Once I push my pawn, the game is over. And Ali Reza beats a 2770 rated Grandmaster by the slimmest of margins, by the slimmest of margins in the endgame. Finishing the European Team Championship with 8 out of 9. He did not lose. He had 7 wins, 2 draws. His team tied for first place by both match points and overall points scored on the team. Um, there's, there's not enough to say. There is not enough to say. The youngest 2800 ever, beating Magnus by 6 by five months, six months, unbelievable stuff. I mean, let me know what you think his ceiling is. I mean, this dude is 18 years old. This, this, this is, we've never seen a prodigy like this since Magnus Carlsen. It's an amazing era to be a chess fan.